Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So Andrew Cuomo finally essentially resigning. He's essentially been ousted mainly by his own party. But why exactly? We're really going to do a deep dive and a little bit of an analysis. Why? Because he should have been gone a long time ago. Technically, it's good riddance. I'm glad that he's gone. But for what reason did he really get kicked out for? And do they actually care? The answer is obvious, they don't. We know they don't. We know they're hypocrites to the point where I just don't think that it's very productive to make that the entire narrative that I'm going to focus on in this video. But I will focus on the fact that since the right actually did set a narrative for once, they were able to oust one of their major political enemies. And it's so true. And the media wouldn't talk about the main threat. And obviously, it was beginning to catch up with them one way or another to the point where even AOC was bringing it up. And AOC was even talking about it. So effectively speaking, they got rid of one of the Democrat frontrunners in the future. Andrew Cuomo has been talking about running for president for decades upon decades now. A lot of people suspected that he would be running for president in 2016. And then when that fell through, a lot of people said he would be running for president in 2020. And that fell through. And a lot of people were talking about 2024 speculation, whether Biden was going to step down. Many people could have been talking about a Cuomo versus Kamala Harris primary. If not, they could have easily been talking about Cuomo. Cuomo 2028 or Cuomo 2032. But either way, it seems like that has all gone out the window with Andrew Cuomo finally deciding to do a stand-up thing and resign, but it's mainly resigning in shame, and he was forced out by his own party. Again, this guy has really been uh, going up against an impeachment threat, and many members of his own party are trying to impeach him. They say they're trying to impeach him for sexual harassment or sexual assault, which, by the way, you have to look and understand what exactly went down. Yes, he was flirting with women. However, he is a single man, and there's obviously nothing wrong with a single man flirting with women. However, he did get a little handsy. And yes, getting a little handsy is something that you shouldn't do, especially with women who you're not really familiar with or they're not really comfortable with you. You don't want to get handsy. But are they really going to impeach him over getting handsy? When you look at the guy in the White House, Joe Biden, not only does he get handsy with literally everybody, he gets handsy with children. And that is honestly one of the most disgusting things that we have to deal with as a country, having a president who acts like this around children, who is absolutely disgusting. And if it was a Republican that did this, yes, technically we know what would happen. But that's a little bit besides the point. The main point that I'm trying to say here is that Cuomo really wasn't forced out because they cared that he was under fire for sexual harassment. No, and they didn't really force him out because of the nursing home scandal. They forced him out because his approval rating was tanking mainly because of the nursing home scandal, mainly because the right set that narrative and they did so effectively, which is a good thing, to the point where Andrew Cuomo decided that he had to step down because he was going to get impeached for largely BS reasons, reasons that they clearly don't care about, but because they had to, because they did not want to take responsibility for what actually was going to happen because they did not want to lose political ammunition on the issue of the virus and the lockdowns. And you see this here, there's a reason why 40% of all people that have died due to the virus have done so in nursing homes. The left is going to sit there and constantly blame Donald Trump. They're going to sit there and say that, oh, this is a Trump virus and these hundreds of thousands of deaths were under Trump's watch, which is just completely inaccurate. But you look at this and even if you're going to apply their same logic to a certain extent, look at where these deaths are occurring. 40% of them are occurring directly in nursing homes, not just old people, no, in nursing homes. And a lot of people, some of them were prisoners. They were getting sent into these nursing homes by Governor Whitmer, by Governor Cuomo, mainly in New York, which was the big scandal. And Cuomo, if you definitely look at New York and you look at the insane increase in the virus spike, where did it spike the most? In New York. You didn't see the same thing in Florida, where Governor Ron DeSantis was doing a phenomenal job with the virus. No, you saw it in New York, and you look at it, and you adjust by all the factors, age, weight, because that's a big one, definitely, obese people. That is a comorbidity, and if you are fat, you are far more likely likely to die from the coronavirus. That is 100% true. So you look at that and you can clearly see the fact that Florida, despite being 
older than New York on average, a higher number of seniors, a lot of New Yorkers actually retire down in Florida, ironically enough, and the blatant fact that the population density of Florida as a whole, it's not really as big as New York City, but uh, comparable to a lot of these larger states like California, Florida arguably doing much better than New York and New Jersey. But that is a little bit besides the point. The main point I wanted to say here is they wanted to distract from that fact with something useless. But either way, the right set the narrative. Cuomo is getting decimated in the head-to-head polls. Lee Zeldin probably would have beaten Cuomo if he decided to stay in and run for 2022. And the polls did have Cuomo leading the pack still. He was at like 26% of the vote, but I mean, there's no runoffs in the state of New York to the point where Cuomo would have easily probably found a way to actually re-get the nomination because he does have a very strange cult and a lot of them call themselves Cuomo sexuals and they're still defending him or whatever. But you look beyond that point, The polls in the general, some of these polls, 26%, by the way, in the Democratic primary, and that's like a high point for him. Where would that get you in a general election? It would not get you very far. Probably around like 17% of the general electorate. Maybe you do get some independent voters, but beyond that, you're at 20%. And there were some head-to-head polls against a generic opponent, Cuomo, he's down there at like 12% in the latest polls. Opponents over at 80%. Now, if a Republican was going up against Cuomo, would Cuomo actually lose by like 80 points? I doubt it because there's a lot of vote blue no matter who people and there may have been a third party. But in a head-to-head, you would be hard-pressed to convince me that in a red wave year, in a midterm year, that Cuomo actually would easily get reelected over Lee Zeldin. I think it would actually probably be within five, if not within 10, And I think Lee Zeldin actually would win. Now, is Lee Zeldin like a pro-Trump America first candidate? I mean, not exactly. I mean, he'd be pretty good for New York, though. And that kind of shows you exactly where we're at. Cuomo got his whole reputation ruined because the right actually set a narrative. The left did not know how to respond. So now they're throwing these uh, lesser BS charges at him. And now they're opening an investigation mainly to get rid of him because they knew that even beforehand, he was under fire. Even beforehand, this was a problem. His approval rating was tanking. There were people within his own party that were fed up with him. And they wanted to get rid of him for the sake of political convenience. And honestly, it is political convenience to the right as well. You look at Cuomo and you look at Newsom. These were two guys that a lot of people were considering the 20 2024 frontrunners if Biden does not run and if Kamala Harris does not get the nomination. Who do the Democrats have now? They have nobody. So either way, this is a victory for the right. It's not a victory for the right in the way a lot of people are going to say. It's not a victory for the right in the way that the media is going to portray it as. But either way, this is a victory for the Republican Party in this country. This is a victory for the right wing. And it's almost accidental. And the Democrats kind of gave them a political victory anyways because they want to keep the governorship in New York. Now the question is who replaces Cuomo and how does this affect the 2022 midterms? I still think that Lee Zeldin probably does lose to a generic Democrat challenger, probably by a lesser margin than in years past because Cuomo's scandal still will reign supreme kind of how we saw in Illinois with the scandals that were surrounding the whole Blažević scenario and how that really affected the Democrats in the 2010 midterms. So I think, yeah, it's probably going to be a little bit closer. I think Zeldin may crack, you know, 42, 43 percent. But either way, and by the way, he outperformed Trump by like 10 in his district. So I'm not just saying that is like a baseless electoral claim. But either way, I do believe that the Democrats are going to take it. I don't know who it's going to be. But if AOC manages to get redistricted out of her seat to the point where she decides to run for the governorship instead, because it seems like she's not going to seek the a Senate seat, and she's not going to primary Schumer, but if she goes for the governorship and somehow gets the nomination, which I doubt will happen, but if it does happen, yeah, maybe we will see Governor Zeldin after all. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.